Okay, step five, boundaries. This is the easiest way I find to do boundaries. So first of all, I make a new layer and call it boundaries and put it above the base map. I then select, you can do this individually, you can do this as a group. For speeds, I'm doing it as a group. So I selected an, a various pieces of geology which I want to have a boundary for. So notice I don't select the pink because it doesn't need a boundary because it's going to have all its boundaries by the other lithologies. Um, okay, so what I do is I make them black, I make them dashed, and um, I play around with the dashed lines. I then um, will may probably make this line quite thin, um, just so it's quite neat. I then send, completely just drag it over and align it with the points at which my block lithology colours meet each other. Okay. So that's me now. I've got clear boundaries that are now above the base map. All I need to now do is go around and tidy up the excess areas which actually aren't boundaries. Um, it just comes with the whole copying and pasting of the lithology block colours. So, so such as the edges here, as well as this edge, the other side. and along the faults. As it's a fault, it doesn't need to have a boundary as well. The change in geology is indicated by the fault on an offset. So, using the path the razor tool is what I'm doing using to, to rub this all out. Um, I just go around and rub out the excess boundary lines. So going around all these faults and all the ends of the maps. And this, this process is just repeated. Okay, as you see here, sometimes it's easy to delete too much. So I have to undo it and then re-delete a little bit more carefully along that line. Okay, so continue going round. Um, so I've deleted that part. See here, I then realise that my pink and my grey are now in the wrong order. So I put my grey above my pink and then that stops that extra piece of pink coming out. Um, alternatively, you could just um, adjust the pink line, uh, the pink unit, so it's completely under the blue. So see, I'm just continuing around, deleting all this excess that I do not need. Sometimes, obviously, because the line's getting broken up, you'll have to reselect it to, to delete. Okay, you'll see like all these rounded units, I don't need to have to adjust. Um, so they've not been touched. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to select these next units that I've not done. So I did this in two stages, but like I said at the beginning, you could do this individ with individual units or you could do it as a, a mass group. It's completely whatever you feel um, is easiest. Um, just make sure that you don't miss out any. Um, so what I'm going along is just selecting the ones I want boundaries for, copying them, and then pasting them in boundaries above the map. That's why they're much brighter in colour here. And so again, I'm just fiddling around checking that they're in the right place. I then make the delete the fill so you can't see uh, uh, the block colour like you have here. And I then make a line. Um, around the outside. However, I then realise that it's just a bit more uh, fiddly, so I just want to actually eye drop the boundaries I've already made, rather than tweaking the line to try and be the same as the rest of the boundaries. So you can see I've got a lot of excess um, boundary lines here that actually aren't boundaries, so I'm just going to go around again and using the path eraser tool just loop round and take off the excess boundary I don't need. So especially you, don't, you really don't need a boundary along the coastline unless it is a boundary. Um, it's, a, it's an easy mistake to make but uh, it's, it's one you don't want to make. So continuing this process just deleting the excess boundary you'll actually see that I didn't copy the grey unit because I didn't again like the pink unit because it's uh, towards the base, everything else is uh, overlapping it. 
Um, so I don't need to essentially copy it to make a boundary. So you see there that I made a bit of a mistake and then went back and is, I'm going to just go a little bit more carefully in my um, erasing of this line. So you can see here that I'm just editing that. So this boundary and this outcrop towards the ocean here is, um, let's see, I'm just editing that. Um, yeah, so this boundary in this part that I'm about to click on is, is an observed boundary. Therefore, I'm going to take off this dashed line and make it a solid line. So this is what you want to be doing with all your observed boundaries. You want to be uh, changing them from a dashed line into a solid line. So the best way to do this, I find, is by selecting the lines. I'm just going to tidy up a little bit here before doing it. So you'll see, again, just taking off the excess uh, line here. And again on this one. Okay, just checking everything's as neat as possible. See, I've realized that uh, I've still got a line along that fault, which isn't correct. So I delete that. It's easy to miss things sometimes, so that's why being as systematic as possible rather than cutting corners is a, and doing things as a, as a big group like I have um, is sometimes better. Okay, so here I'm wanting to go and check, like I was saying earlier, um, where my observed boundaries are. So I'm locking everything just to ensure that I don't uh, move the things that I'm not trying to tweak. So that's why I've only got boundaries um, untoggled. So. I'm just going around, checking where I can see uh, observed boundaries. I found one here all along that kind of cliff section area there um, that I've marked on as a, an observed boundary, a solid line, you can see there. So I need to go and find where I um, finish that and it makes it becomes a, observed, so dash. So what I do, so here it is here, I make a little incision using the path eraser tool again and then select it Go to stroke, so select the area that I want to be solid and unselect dash line. And that's me got a solid line. So I repeat this process. You can do this like that was quite a large section, but see here, I've got just one outcrop with a um, solid line going the whole way through it. So then I do two incisions either side and then just select the one piece of line that I want to make. Uh, solid line and again untoggle dash line. So this can be repeated until that you've got all your um, observed and inferred boundaries correct. Okay, so now that I've corrected all my inferred and observed boundaries, I'm just going to show you that they have all been done, such as this one here, that was the one I did at the beginning, and so on and so forth. So again, along my faults, I've got no extra boundaries, and you can see that my map is more or less done, apart from the data that I need to put on, such as striking dips. Okay, so I'm just showing you around the map. Okay, and here I just show you what it looks like if you put your boundaries below your base map. You can see that they're really not very clear and um, you can kind of almost hardly see where they are. So that's why I'm going to correct it and put it back above the base map and you can see they're much more clear.